A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry that God did not carry out the evil he threatened against Nineveh. He prayed, I beseech you, Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? This is why I fled at first to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger, rich in clemency, loath to punish. And now, Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. The Lord asked, have you a reason to be angry? Jonah then left the city for a place to the east of it, where he built himself a hut and waited under it in the shade to see what would happen to the city. And when the Lord God provided a gourd plant that grew up over Jonah's head, giving shade that relieved him of any discomfort, Jonah was very happy over the plant. But the next morning at dawn, God sent a worm that attacked the plant so that it withered. And when the sun arose, God sent a burning east wind, and the sun beat upon Jonah's head till he became faint. Then Jonah asked for death, saying, I would be better off dead than alive. But God said to Jonah, Have you a reason to be angry over the plant? I have reason to be angry, Jonah answered, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You are concerned over the plant which cost you no labor and which you did not raise. It came up in one night, and in one night it perished. And should I not be concerned over Nineveh, the great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who cannot distinguish their right hand from their left, not to mention the many cattle. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Lord, you are merciful and gracious. Lord, you are merciful and gracious. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for to you I call all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Lord, you are merciful and gracious. For to you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, Lord, have mercy, Lord, all the nations you have shall come and worship you, O Lord and glorify your name, for you are great, and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Dominus vobiscum, et cum spiritus tuum, Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Lucam, Gloria Tibi Domine. Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, 
Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. We ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us and do not subject us to the final test. Verbum Domini, Laus Tibi Christe, Laudator Jesus Christus, praise be Jesus Christ. As you can tell from the vestments I'm wearing today and from our opening prayer, we're having a votive mass in honor of St. Joseph, especially during this holy year devoted to St. Joseph. At Mount St. Mary's Seminary, where I work now every Wednesday, we have the wonderful tradition that Father Ken Brigenti started of having a, the litany of St. Joseph prayed by the seminarians right after the morning mass. I think it's a wonderful idea for us to honor St. Joseph, especially during this special year. And in a particular way, I think he's a good role model for us as we recently heard from Pope Francis and from the American bishops giving him a title, St. Joseph, the Defender of Life. As many of you probably heard this past Sunday on Respect Life Sunday, St. Joseph is certainly the role model for family life and in a very special way because he defended the unborn life of Jesus as he dwelled in his mother's immaculate womb. He took care of Mary as she was with child. So he protected the mother and the child, not just during her pregnancy, but even afterwards. Remember how he had to flee into Egypt, take care of the Holy Family. And as we know, Jesus spent 30 of his 33 years in the Holy Family, at the Holy House, under St. Joseph's tutelage, under his guidance. In fact, so close were the two that Jesus himself would be called not only the carpenter's son, but a carpenter himself. You don't get that title carpenter if you don't know what you're doing. So he certainly learned things from St. Joseph. One of the things St. Joseph does for us is give us a wonderful insight into divine providence. As we continue with our story of Jonah today, this wonderful incident where he's really having a bad day. Remember, we just mentioned yesterday, he did not want to go to Nineveh, but he went because he found out the hard way. Do not cross the Lord God. And so when he goes, after it was completely successful, the king and even the cattle put on sackcloth and ashes, he's still not a happy camper. And today, he gets mad. He's angry because he gets a sunburn on his bald head. This worm eats the plant that had given him shade. Now, you and I can identify, I'm sure, with Jonah at times. Things aren't going the way we want or expect. And so we get angry. I felt that way back in January when I had contracted the COVID pneumonia and I was in the hospital for a week. I'm thinking, this, this isn't right. Why did I get this? Why am I in the hospital? Why do they look at me like I'm from another planet? Or I should say, they look like they're from another planet. Wearing these spacesuits and hazmat outfits and would come in and talk to you. And they had like five different things over their face and their mouth. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. Uh-oh, you lost hearing too. Okay. And I had to remind myself of St. Joseph. Joseph is told in a dream not to worry, to take Mary as your wife. Because he finds out that she is with child. He knows he's not the father. And we're told in sacred scripture that St. Joseph is a just man, not just a man, but a just man. This is more than just being a nice guy. So when Joseph finds out Mary's with child, he decides to divorce her quietly, not because he says to himself, 
hey, I don't want anything to do with this. I'll just bow out gracefully. That's not what's going on in Joseph. Brother Fred Miller, who's now at Seton Hall Immaculate Conception Seminary, was once at Mount St. Mary's with me and Father Briganti, and he gave a wonderful homily one day on St. Joseph, and he said, what motivated Joseph to divorce Mary quietly was not because he was ashamed, and not because he didn't want to just have an easy way out for her and him, but rather, Joseph realized this was above his pay grade. He was not worthy of this awesome mystery. For yes, Mary was with child, and there was no father. He realized this is something of God. And so without knowing what's going on, he decides to divorce her quietly, not as an escape, but an act of humility. I'm not worthy. Non sub dignus. And that's when the angel says, don't worry, Joseph. Take Mary as your wife. He has no idea what's going to happen to him next. He has no idea that he's going to have to go and find a place for Mary to give birth. He has no idea that he has to go to Bethlehem. He has no idea they're going to have to flee into Egypt. But despite all his uncertainties, he does the will of God. And as Jesus teaches us how to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. Mary made this her motto, her fiat. But so did St. Joseph. Joseph is not, giving, is not given a playbook saying, hey, don't worry, Joe, this is how it works out. But with full trust and confidence in God, especially after the angel speaks to him, he now embraces the will of God completely and totally. I think that gives him a lot more credit than just, well, he wants to wiggle out of an uncomfortable situation. No. And in this year of St. Joseph, we need to be more like him, less like Jonah. We have to be more like St. Joseph and say, Lord, your will be done no matter where it takes me, no matter how it unfolds. Yes, it's above my pay grade. So what? I'm here to serve, not be served. I want to be more like St. Joseph and less like my old self. I want to embrace God's will and not my own. Now, I always had sympathy for poor, poor St. Joseph because every time he fell asleep, some angel would talk to him. You know, go here, go there. If I was St. Joseph, I'd be afraid even to take a nap, thinking that some angel was going to speak to me again. And remember, when Jesus was missing for three days, he's in the temple. Yes, that was one of Mary's sorrows, but it's also a sorrow of Joseph. He loved Jesus as if he were his own flesh and blood. And what foster father would not be worried out of his mind on how is he doing? Where is he? Is he safe? Is he alive? Has he been kidnapped? And like Mary, he finds Jesus in the temple teaching the teachers. He's worried because he's a good dad. He's a just man. He's a holy soul. And one of his roles in protecting the holy family is also to be the patron of the church, universal patron of the church around the world. Because he was in charge of the holy family, he's also in charge of us. So we need to be like him. There was a wonderful prayer that was given recently from the bishops' conference on this idea of Joseph as defender of life, and I want to share that with you. Dearest St. Joseph, at the word of an angel, you lovingly took Mary into your home. As God's humble servant, you guided the Holy Family on the road to Bethlehem. Welcome Jesus as your own son in the shelter of a manger, and fled far from your homeland for the safety of both mother and child. We praise God that as their faithful protector, you never hesitated to sacrifice for those entrusted to you. May your example inspire us also to welcome, to cherish, and to safeguard God's most precious gift of human life. Help us to faithfully commit ourselves to the service and defense of human life, especially where it is vulnerable or threatened. Obtain for us the grace to do the will of God in all things. Amen.
May God bless us and Mary keep us.